the Cybersecurity and Compliance Podcast with Craig Petronella. Learn about the most current IT security threats in ransomware, phishing, business email compromise, cyber crime tactics, cyber heist schemes, social engineering scams, as well as hints and tips from leading professionals to help you prevent hackers from penetrating your network and dropping ransomware or malware payloads. This podcast will arm you with the best info to defend your network against the latest cyber crimes. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And now, here's your host, Craig Petronella. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another podcast episode. It is May 7th, 2021. We're going to talk about cryptocurrency and cybersecurity today. We have BJ, Hello. Blake, and Aaron. Hello. Hello. All right, BJ, do you want to lead with um, EOS and ADA? So, sure. So, um, so this week um, on the cryptocurrency market, there's a couple of like interesting things happening. So, um, Bitcoin is kind of confusing everyone because it's kind of defying normal technical analysis and not following like expected patterns. So there's been a, some confusion on Bitcoin um, recently. It's just kind of ranging, hovering at the same place, um, high 50s, 50 thousands. So what um, kind of what the emerging theory is, is that, you know, we are more in an altcoin season where um, the Bitcoin dominance level, which is um, in relation to the altcoins, like how much of the cryptocurrency market you know, belongs to Bitcoin versus all the other coins, which collectively are called the altcoins. So the Bitcoin dominance level um, has is kind of allowing for the altcoins to um, some of them break out of um, you know current patterns and and um, see some pretty significant gains. So so far this week um, we've been watching um, Cardano, which the ticker is ADA for that. Um, and then we've also been watching um, EOS, EOS, and that blockchain is the EOSIO blockchain. So the coin is EOS. So those two have been doing um, quite well this week, especially EOS, um, huge gains yesterday. And then um, Cardano is expected um, to be the, the next huge gainer. So I guess there's a lot of room for that one to grow. And it's a similar blockchain to Ethereum. So it's like a, um, a blockchain where a bunch of um, DeFi apps, uh, decentralized finance apps are built on. So some people consider the Cardano blockchain to be a rival um, to the Ethereum blockchain um, simply because it does the same thing. And I think, um, Craig, you mentioned that I think one of the founders of Ethereum also um, went and founded Cardano, I think you said. Yeah, that, that's true. And I just want to add one thing to our listeners. Obviously, this discussion is in no way, shape, or form advice or financial advice in any way. This is just our interpretation of the market, and everybody is entering at their own risks. Yeah, and so um, so it's quite a volatile market right now, and um, there's a kind of opinion seem to be, like, usually they're more, um, from what I gather, they're more aligned, and right now it's looking like more of a rift, like 50-50, like, some people are thinking it's going this way and some people are thinking it's going that way. And some people are giving up on Bitcoin because it's ranging. But I think that um, overall, it looks like Bitcoin's pretty healthy and it's given the altcoins an opportunity to, um, you know, kind of mature a bit. So so it's very exciting times um, for cryptocurrency. Agreed. Yeah, I think um, I think we, we briefly talked about this yesterday, BJ. I think what's happening also is obviously Bitcoin is, you know, the, the most popular, right? It's um, the most expensive at the moment and it's because of the fixed supply. Um, yeah. And well, it's, it's I think, because I think it's because of more than that too, though, Craig, I think it's the fixed supply, which is number one, like, because there's 21 million Bitcoin um, that can ever be produced. And, you know, I think we're at around 19 million in circulation right now. And a lot of those 19 million are in cold storage, you know, like wallets, like how you store your Bitcoin. And so they're not, they're not like liquid and they're not moving. And so it does create like a supply and demand thing. But I think even more than that, there's um, like, there's been more adoption of Bitcoin, you know, more people understand it with the altcoins. A lot of them are more in the shadows still, you know, and especially like the, the, even people who create or trade these altcoins 
um, don't necessarily look into the technology behind them, you know, so, but a lot of, and and so you have um, a lot of technology that's like emerging tech, that's like really brilliant ideas be, and with um, like some like developers that would just probably blow your mind, the quality of things they're putting out on these, um, on these altcoin blockchains. So that's worth talking about as well. Like the, the quality is just not, they're not as adopted yet as Bitcoin. So the value on that is obviously, it, you know, quite a bit higher, but I think there's potential potential for some of these altcoins you know bitcoin was created as a currency as a you know the whole if you look at the bitcoin white paper it's it's to create a peer-to-peer trustless payment system so that's the purpose you know of that blockchain but the other blockchains have they have um you know set goals as well and some of them are, are quite quite interesting so you know yes you can trade them on the market but some of them like the potential there for future um growth is 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 worth looking into what are some yeah. ones that, since I'm not really familiar with all the the, I'm not as into the cryptos as you guys are. What are ones that uh, that maybe some of our listeners should look out for, possibly? Well, before we get into that, I just want to comment one last thing on what BJ said. So, roughly 21 million supply, fixed supply, meaning no more will be minted or created. The, the other issue, though, is a lot of people have lost their passwords and vaporized their holdings. <laughs> yeah. So you don't, we don't really know how much is left. <laughs> My point is that True. the reason why Bitcoin is is the leader and first to market, of course, it's going to be the most popular because it was first to market, but it's such a big disruptor and it's a big you know, store of value, But and it's truly supply and demand. There's no manipulation by a government or a third party. Um, my point in, in saying that is... We think that it's 19 million left or whatever it is. Yeah, true. It, That's a good it's point. It's actually a lot less than that. And nobody truly knows. Because That's a very good point. There's people that, like I was talking to a colleague this morning. And we look at, like, we oh, have Blake. I, Blake's on the here right now. Blake's missing 10 Bitcoin. Look, there's a perfect example. Yep. And then we, you know, I, I was talking to a colleague this morning and he said, I don't know what my password, I'm like, oh my gosh, if you forgot your password, you just lost all your money. So, you know, people have to take cybersecurity around this super seriously, because I I think that it's going to be a lot, lot lower than 19 million. But to go back to. So that's, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that, but that's a, you know what, Craig, that's a huge point, actually, because if you think back to like the days where like the Blakes of the world were buying in very early. Like they did not yet understand how big this would be. And so there was a lot of lackadaisical password remembering, you know, because it wasn't that big of a deal. So maybe a lot of the early adapters that bought the Bitcoins when they were 50 cents and stuff, you know, who knows how much of that is still around. You're right. Yep. So so that's why Bitcoin will probably be the dominant coin and because of that true supply and demand factor. Mm -hmm. However, like what BJ said, there are... Um, good reasons and bad reasons to use Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is not the best or fastest transfer. It takes a long time to transfer it. So it's really not, you're not going to want to buy not coffee. scalable. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, I think you're right. So I think I, what I see with this market, with the crypto, if you like back up and kind of take a bird's eye view is that like, Bitcoin was the disruptor, you know, like Bitcoin, like something brand new was introduced to the world and it was blockchain technology, you know, like we didn't, we didn't have it before. And so now like this blockchain technology has truly changed the way that payments and money can transfer between hands. But that's just, that was just the disruptive part. Like that was just the introduction to the world, you know, but now that Bitcoin's like, it's fairly um, adopted and understood by at least a, a small percentage of the population. So now these altcoin blockchains, <clears throat> some of them are just taking the blockchain concept and building it into something just like far bigger than than what the original concept was, you know? And that's fine. That's probably, that's that was what, you know, Bitcoin was meant to disrupt and, and introduce this idea to the market. But now these altcoins, I mean, they're building things that on these blockchains that are just like, wow, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, starting with the most popular altcoin, and by the way, any coin other than Bitcoin is called an altcoin, like BJ said earlier, the, um, the Ethereum blockchain or the Ethereum latest ETH coin is the ticker, um, which is the latest version. The, the older one was ETC or Ethereum Classic, but ETH is the, the one that's, that's kind of going crazy right now. Anyway, there's a lot of um, ERC-20 
tokens based on Ethereum. And you've probably heard of what's called NFT or non-fungible tokens now that are being really um, made popular with the art and music industries at the moment. The NFT stuff is going nuts because it's a way to prove like so say like bj went or blake wanted to buy a, a picasso painting an original art um you can get a non-fungible token that basically proves on the blockchain that bj or blake bought that piece of art and that it's in the the actual artwork is embedded into the blockchain with yeah. your identity so that mm -hmm. it's bound to you yeah um, and, and that's the main definition of a non-fungible token just so people understand like it's just something that makes that token like it's it's not interchangeable with any other token now it's now unique it's stamped with right. something and it's it's personalized for you and it's no longer an anonymous interchangeable token that's right yeah so <clears throat> so um obviously blockchain is a great use case for proving ownership of something and that's why that's that's pretty hot right now but the the point that i'm making there is that it's all almost all of that NFT stuff is based on the Ethereum network, which is another great use case for using or or for potentially uh, holding some Ethereum because the the um, the price will most likely go up. Now the problem with Ethereum um, is that the supply is a lot more than 19 million, so that's an issue. However, they so, that's, so let me interject one thing there because that's an interesting issue. And it, what's happening with that issue right now is interesting to watch because you're absolutely right. There, there's not a supply demand natural crisis with Ethereum like there is with Bitcoin. But due to the fact that right now there's a huge uh, project underway called the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. And due to that project, and, and I'm on the website for ethereum.org, and they just, just to quickly say what it is, the ETH2 update is a set of interconnected upgrades that will make Ethereum more scalable, more secure, and more sustainable. So it's a set of upgrades that are all being done together, like in an interconnected way. And what's happened is so the Ethereum community, the community of Ethereum holders, um, believes very strongly in the, the 2.0 upgrade. So what they've done is a lot of them, a lot of them have staked their Ethereum, which means that they don't touch it. They commit to staking it to support the project, the building of the 2.0 upgrade. And because such a large number of Ethereum has been staked um, towards the 2.0 upgrade, like I staked some myself personally, um, because so much has been staked, there actually is um, a, a, a supply demand crisis now. Um, a lot of the Ethereum, um, well, the Ethereum coin right now is considered deflationary at this moment due to that fact. So it's interesting. It was not an issue previously, but due to the community banding together and, and not spending their Ethereum because they're supporting the upgrade, it actually is a, an issue now. And that's part of what's been driving the price recently on Ethereum. Yeah, well said. One thing I just want to talk about staking. So staking, you can you can put, you can stake a coin like BJ was saying, but it's, it's kind of locked. You can't then sell it you have to stake it for the period of time that it's kind of like a contract you're, you're staking mm -hmm. or not touching it for a <clears throat> period of time kind of like a cd with your bank you know you can put money away with the bank um yes. and get a you know an interest or an apr back um for that that's that locking up or staking you gotta yes, be careful with staking, that with though. several I, different I have points. mixed thoughts on staking because mm -hmm. I, I don't like when things are trapped in places because yeah you know obviously this market is very volatile and mm -hmm. if, you know, if for, for whatever reason, it might be unlikely, but if for whatever reason, Ethereum drops to $600, a, you know, a token, um, you're trapped. You can't sell. Yes, you're stuck right. in that contract. So that, those are right. risks that you have to accept. That's right. And typically when people are staking, it's more like I kind of look at the market entering the cryptocurrency market kind of in layers. <clears throat> so, you know, at layer one, you're just brand new and you're just buying coins and you're usually like trying to buy some Bitcoin and maybe some Ethereum. And as you get more involved into the cryptocurrency, it kind of evolves, you know, and then as you start learning the, the technology behind some of the, the blockchains, then you start, um, you know, actually wanting to support it because, you know, some of it is quite promising. And so when enough people do that, I think it kind of, it helps with the problem you're describing because there's enough belief put into these ideas and support behind it that the risk of them flopping while there's so much support you know underlying them is is probably fairly low 
Yeah, I just I just wanted to make the point yeah. though. Like if you if you've got ten thousand dollars worth of crypto holdings, mm-hmm. you may not want to put ten thousand dollars in stake. Oh no, yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> so, I yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody's everybody's risk tolerance different, but yeah, you know, just kind of caution and yes. think about that exactly. You know. But it's interesting to watch the unexpected, um, you know, the unexpected effects of certain human behaviors, you know. Because like Ethereum always had a, you know, supply demand it, uh, problem, you know, there's too much of it. But this, what, what these people have done together has kind of changed that. And it's interesting to watch because that was not a natural thing. That, that, was, that was something that happened as a result of human behavior. True. And, and I don't know if you remember BJ or Blake or Aaron, but, you know, when Bitcoin several years ago, um, a lot of people were complaining about the high transaction fees and, and the um, the use case that they could not buy a coffee because of the fees. That's why some Bitcoin developers created Bitcoin Cash. And that was kind of the whole fork, right? That was the split of, OK, we're going to create this separate blockchain. We're going to cre- create this separate coin because the developers couldn't come to agreement. The original developers couldn't come to agreement and consensus around the, the total focal point and use case of the coin. So now we have Bitcoin Cash, which is also a, you know another altcoin. Um, but you could see the variance of you know Bitcoin Cash. I think is trading at like five or six hundred dollars a coin, mm-hmm. and Bitcoin is you know fifty seven thousand roughly a coin. Um, yeah. So so like BJ was saying, you you may want to think about Bitcoin as like your long term. You know maybe you know I'm gonna put long-term money away in Bitcoin, but not necessarily use the Bitcoin to mm-hmm. buy small things. Right. Um, you, you know, if you buy a house, maybe in the future, you might use Bitcoin to buy the house because it's a large transaction. You know? Right. Um, yeah. But if you're going to buy, you know, small coffees and things like that, you might want to use something like Bitcoin Cash or Litecoin or some of these other coins that are um, faster and yeah. more suited towards that smaller transaction size. That's that's a really good point. Yeah, it's it's a, that's an interesting point you make because if you again from the bird's eye view, all of these different now I'm sure you know not all of these altcoins will emerge winners in the end. I'm sure you know, but uh, um, there's going to be a degree of washout. But you know there are lots and lots of quality altcoins, and they, if you look at them like from a you know from the concept um, perspective, like they all have different goals and, and purposes. So they don't you know a lot of people um, take the the stance of well this coin is going to be the only one that makes it or but there's you know there's a lot of really good quality ideas out there on these on these different blockchains and they all seek to to do different things some are in competition with each other but for the most part they all kind of bring different things to the table have you guys heard about that yep. new um safe bitcoin or something has anybody heard about that i think you're talking about wrapped bitcoin oh wrapped bitcoin yeah the, the ticker is safe btc oh no oh, that's I another that. one that's a different one yeah what's the, what's the idea behind that one um i think so it's 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 got some type of safe moon protocol. So that oh, safe for- moon. Okay. Yes. That's doing really well too this week. So, so people- what's the idea? I don't know about this one, Blake. So what is it? So apparently like 2%, like the people that hold this coin get 2% per transaction and 2% of the liquidity, like forever. And then um, they apply like a 5% tax on every transaction or something like that. Hmm. Um. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. And I've just seen a lot. Of, I follow a lot of like crypto influencers. And yes, this is one that they're talking about a lot. Yes, sure. it's, it's price wise. It's been quite active recently. But yeah, that's one that I haven't I haven't made time to look into yet because there's there's so many of them, you know, <laughs> but that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't ones, hear that. New ones pop up every day. I was looking at their website. So there, it's 4% fees per transaction, 2% locked in liquidity and burn, 2% distributed to holders, 60% of the, the tokens have been burned. So they're using a burn rate to reduce supply. And some it's other like, one, Craig, you mentioned BNB was doing that, the Binance coin, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so a lot of these chains are, are taking, um, you know, different measures to, to, it's interesting. Like a lot of these chains are like self-sufficient and they're doing, they're take, they take measures to fix their own problems, you know? 
Mm-hmm. They do so upgrades safe. and they do it's it's just nice to watch because it truly is decentralization in action. Like you're watching like people taking like building things into their own hands, you know, instead of just waiting for someone else to do it. You know, these are people like are building things. And like I follow one of uh, I guess he's the lead developer on the um the Siacoin blockchain. <clears throat> and just to follow the ideas that these people are coming up with. And like, I mean, it's just, oh my gosh, like to keep up with this stuff is just, it's, it's a lot of work. Like the ideas they're coming up with are phenomenal. Like the Siacoin blockchain is <clears throat> decentralized storage, but the way that they've set it up is literally nothing short of genius. I mean, they've put every precaution in place to where, I mean, I just can't find a flaw with it, you know, with the way it's, with the way they're doing it. Like it's, it's just phenomenal. The, the, the thought that they've put into this stuff. Just one word of caution, though, with with safe BTC, Sidecoin, and, and some of these other altcoins, you, you're you're trusting the developers to be honest. Yes. And if they go rogue, they can really go with your money. So yes, and um, that has happened too. So it does. You know, it is important to do your. That's a, something good to bring up. But it has happened to people. Um, not just with coins. You know, unfortunately, in any market or any landscape, you're going to have um, a percentage of great quality. You're going to have mediocre. You're going to have fallout. And then you're going to have garbage that, you know, some of this is meant to be a scam. Like, I'm sure there are coins out there that are, you know, the the intentions of the people behind them are not good. It's like everything in the world. But, you know, it just takes a little bit of research, you know, to look into these things. But, um, you know, you want to be careful about using exchanges as well that aren't aren't very reputable or well-known because, you know, they can shut down as well and take your money. So, um, yeah. you know, some of, there's some, I think some, some that are pretty safe that, you know, a lot of people use that, you know, should be pretty safe, but it is something to, to be cautious about, but the same thing happens with, you know, cash, you have scammers there as well. Yeah. Back. Um, that reminds me back in 2017, you know, um, when the crypto market was going crazy back then, I think the statistic was over 90% of IPO or initial ICOs, initial coin offerings of new coins being, you know, put out were were all crap coins. 90%. Yeah, it was crazy. It was all based on, you know, that's why Dogecoin or doggy coin, however you want to say it. That's why, you know, when that coin was built, it was built as a joke originally. And then it got endorsement by Elon Musk and by Mark Cuban. And, you know, that's how it kind of got its boost, so to speak. But the original premise was based on a joke. And, you know, back in 17, there were so many coins that were being produced just to ride the wave. And for these Mm -hmm. developers really to just get rich, it was a quick way for them to list a coin, write a seven page white paper that had no backing on it and make millions of dollars. Or which tens and, of like, millions of dollars. from a basic level, like how is that possible? <laughs> well, like, from a basic that... level, I mean, we all we all can say we're going to create a coin today. We can go and develop a coin. But you're and, literally and... creating a currency. Like, how did this happen? How did this become possible? Well, I think Bitcoin kind of paved the way from the digitized, you know. But I mean, as far as money goes, I mean, anything can be used as money. I mean, you know, back ages ago seashells were used as money so i mean but I, I guess like the world just didn't understand this before or something because like people are producing coins and getting them listed and people are buying them and they're becoming currency like whoever knew that that was possible that you could do that I, well like i said i think that that's true and i think that that really has been paved by bitcoin but, by but bitcoin. Here's yeah the- it was just such a groundbreaking idea yeah, but here's my point though. My what I was trying to make is is with Bitcoin, for example, since we know it's a limited supply and we know it cannot be shut down very easily because basically all the miners would have to go dark all across the world. Um super unlikely for all of that to happen. So fixed supply, it's um it's the most trusted blockchain because it's the longest. It's been around. It's, it's getting stronger and stronger every day. And the point I'm trying to make is, and again, this isn't financial advice, but if you were to, t- to buy Bitcoin today and then move it to what's called a cold wallet and just sit on it or save it there, you're a true holder or hodler um, of Bitcoin and it can't be manipulated or changed 
by anyone. So five years from now, who knows, it could be worth a million dollars a coin. And maybe that was a good decision, or maybe it's worth a thousand dollars a coin and it was a bad decision. Nobody really knows. Um, my point though, is with a lot of these altcoins that come out every day, like we'll use the safe BTC as an example. This one's currently trade. It's brand new, currently trading at, um, here's the chart, uh, 0.00000000. 1184. So very far below a penny. Which, um, which coin are you talking about? The safe BTC that oh, Blake oh wrote. oh it's that I didn't realize it was that well that like that's an interesting yeah point. so yeah but the point that I'm trying to make though is if you put money in this mm -hmm. it's super risky way right. more risky than something like Bitcoin or Ethereum and oh, the yeah. reason the reason why it's so risky is because there's probably no cold wallet to get it off. So you're going to you're going to store it on a software wallet, which is much more, much less secure than a cold wallet. And by software wallet, you mean something like MetaMask? Yeah, or, or something okay. that like an app on your phone or a software that you would download from the safe BTC dot or safe Bitcoin dot IO website. You're again, heavily trusting the developers that that wallet is secure. Who right. knows if it has a back door in it that they could take all your money. Um, so these are risks you have to accept if you want to dabble in this. However, you you know, in the future, if this is something that works out and it does get listed on an exchange, you know, those I consider some of these coins that are so new like this, if they get listed on a popular exchange like Coinbase or Kraken or Binance, that's a milestone. It's a good milestone. It's it a is. Positive and, milestone. And, it, and it means, you know, that's a, that's a point worth like reiterating, Craig, because like, I feel once a coin gets listed on a major exchange, you know, like I, for example, personally, like follow like Kraken and Coinbase listings, like to see what coins they have. Once something gets listed on an exchange that I find reputable, then I find that I can put a lot more trust in the coin itself because that exchange has done a lot of work to vet that coin and the and the developers and the team. So it's not a guarantee, but I think it, it does give it a, a, a degree of safety. One thing though is let's just say safe BTC, like you could get into safe BTC with like $10 or like hmm. $15 and then, you know, hope for that, like hope that somebody picks it up. And then even if it goes to like a penny or like, you know, like 20 cents or, you know, something crazy like that, like, you know, you'll be rich. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a, that's a great point, Blake. I guess what I was trying to make, what I was trying to say is it's the evolution of, Anyone can write an I, a white paper and create an IPO. Anybody. It could yeah. be a three-year-old <laughs> and, yes. and the mom and dad could write the paper for them. And it you could be, could be anonymous like, like Satoshi Nakamoto and change the world and no one knows who you really are. <laughs> right. So, you, so anyone can literally write the white paper and the better you are at writing and grammar and, and marketing, mm -hmm. the, the more influence you'll have with that paper. And, mm. and it could be built, that white paper could literally be built on nothing. Like there could be it could be all lies, you know, and this yeah. is real. So, so yeah. my point is that you launch the paper. If you know how to launch a website, you put the paper on the website. You're, you, if you know how to do social media marketing, you drive traffic to the website and you get people, you get buzz, right? You get people to, to look at this stuff like the safe Bitcoin, for example. Um, yeah, like Blake just got us, like we, we just happened naturally, organically, like right here, it unfolded in front of us because Blake's got us looking into this. So here, like that's, you're exactly right. That's what's happening with us right now. Correct. So, so my point is, like Blake said, yes, you could put a small amount of money, five, ten dollars, um, or maybe you you have a higher risk tolerance and you put a hundred or thousand dollars, whatever is the right amount for you. The point is, yes, you can put your risk on the line, and who knows, one day in the future, it could be one of the outliers and it could work out. But it is super risky. One of the most risky. Any coins that are so low in fractions of a penny are the most risky. Yes. However, the most risky ones are also they can go up thousands of percentage or they, they are the ones that have thousands. the largest potential for exponential growth right so, so if you if you know if you diversify like what blake was saying you and you put ten dollars or whatever you're comfortable with and you kind of you put it in your software wallet you make sure you you remember your passwords and you forget about it for a few years and then check on it you could win or you could not Yes, that's exactly right. And, you know, to like, here, let's just like, to, again, from the bird's eye view, like, here's the facts of the cryptocurrency market. 
It's volatile. It's very risky. Um, it has created millionaires and billionaires <laughs> um, already, you know, and then the new wave is, is, is coming in and people are getting into some of these, you know, coins like the one Blake mentioned and the potential with them is like enormous. So is the risk. But this is a perfect example where, um, you know, knowledge is power because they're uh, researching the the background of these coins and the history can really help, you know, influence your decision in, in the right way, you know, so it's very important. And then to do your to do your homework on this stuff and, and also to look at the community that supports the coin, because you can actually you can actually, um, you know, look them up on social media and see what kind of, you know, people they are and stuff. So you can that can help you make determinations as well but i mean the fact of the matter is is that this is a volatile um like volatile market and there is a potential to 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 change much um you know with this stuff for people's personal lives and and more so but it's um it's definitely um, something that uh, you need to understand fully you know before you before you make major decisions yeah. And, and again, you know, do your own research and make sure before you put even five or ten dollars. I mean, you don't want to fund something that's terrorist or or black market based that, you know, you want to make sure that you do as best you you possibly can to make sure that these people are real. They have you know a good reputation and, you know, then make your decision from that. Yeah. Point and it, and it, and it's good to, um, you know, have a source, like, for example, like we provide, you know, honest, uh, just analysis of how, like we view these coins and stuff. So it's good to have, you know, a go-to like that, you know, where you can have a trusted source that can kind of help you understand these things because overarching all of this, right. Like why are we even care about this as a company is overarching. All of this is that this is all being done on the internet. Like this is all digital. It's digital currency. It's all digital. And we understand cybersecurity and overarching all of this. It doesn't matter if you do a million hours of research and pick all the right coins. You know, if you don't have your cybersecurity in order, like, you know, hopefully you can hang on to your money, you know, best of luck with that, but you've got to get your cybersecurity in order. So <clears throat> I woke up this morning to someone uh, announcing that their, that their wallet had been drained, their software wallet. So <clears throat> these things do happen and, and all the right buying in the world is not going to protect you from, you know, cyber risks if you're not taking the proper precautions. Well said. And, and that's something that, you know, like PJ was saying, you know, we're not providing financial advice of any kind, but what we are doing is, we are doing the research to figure out our opinions on what we feel are, are the, the better choices um, and options. And then, like she said, you know, with security in mind, we're looking deep into the cybersecurity and helping folks with that. And we'll be launching um, outside of our podcast, which, of course, is free. We're going to be launching a, a like an inner circle group where you can get the latest questions that you have or get advice or consulting in regards to security around crypto and, and blockchain and AI and some of these hot topics right now. Yeah. And, and that's, um, I would, I would encourage people to make sure that their level of risk tolerance matches the level of their cybersecurity, you know, like for, for, uh, you know, the more you're, the more you're putting into this of your personal funds, or business funds, whatever, the more you're putting into it, you know, hopefully your cybersecurity is growing um, in proportion to that because it's going to, it's critical. Like, I think, you know, we all in, in this industry agree that the internet is probably the most important thing that's ever happened to our current known world. But, um, you know, I think we, we jumped the gun on adoption of the internet before we took the proper precautions. And so, you know, the cyber landscape right now is very threatening. So it's it's very wise to be careful out there in the cyber in the cyber world. Yeah, and by default, the internet is not secure. I mean, no. there's all, it, it's so much duct tape, band aids, and bubble gum. And, you know, yes. the internet by <laughs> default is not secure, yeah. and, and you need these different security control layers to do the best you can and make yourself as unhackable as possible. So be sure to check out our website at blockchainsecurity.com which is our website where we speak everything crypto AI and keep you up to date on all the latest of this, especially cybersecurity and check out our inner circle.
Yep. Very, very, um, very important stuff there that, that make sure that's the foundation is the best, the best advice <laughs> that we can give. Make sure you have a strong foundation that you're building upon. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Cybersecurity and Compliance Podcast with Craig Petronella. For other episodes and more information, visit PetronellaTech.com. Also visit our other websites, ComplianceArmor.com and BlockchainSecurity.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for listening and stay secure.